edition of the On The Mic Podcast, and I'm not just saying this, I truly do mean this. I am so excited to talk to my next guest. I'm a little mad it took so long, but at his previous home and another promotion, it's very hard to get in touch with those guys. So I'm very happy now that he is with the PFL and he will be in the main event on August 18th to kick off the 2023 playoffs. The crochet boss, the one and only Maurice Green. Sir, how are you? <laughs> in my angry face. Uh, I love it. I'm I doing. It. I'm doing well, man. I can't complain, really. You know, uh, I'm not a. I'm a spiritual person, so I don't. You know, I don't talk to God. I talk to God, but I don't talk to Jesus, Bryce. You know, um, but um, I'm blessed. I really am. Uh, I've been given a lot of opportunities in this game, and you know, it's time to capitalize on them opportunities. I'm 37. I ain't no young man, so it's time to go win a fucking world championship. You know. Yeah, and uh, honestly, I don't know if there's a, a better story for anyone in any promotion. You know, somebody like you, like you said, you've been given so many opportunities and uh, you've been through a lot of experiences. Uh, now you, you've gotten this opportunity, stepping up uh, to begin the playoffs. You take it on a knockout artist. I mean, it's not something that you haven't seen before, right? <laughs> yeah. What do you make yeah. of that? I took out a knockout artist in golf off. Um, and the shit I did before the golf off fight, you look at me like, nigga, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, made just made some bad decisions, like personally in my life. And a uh, bunch of dumb shit. And I fought him for three rounds, you know, like a dumbass. You know, I, I was out in Arizona the weekend before. And it was terrible. I already had a plan before I got the short order fight. I had to do it. I didn't have to do it how I did. But, you know, sometimes when you're out, you know, you're just enjoying yourself. So to come into that fight uh, and go three rounds of him knowing that you are a shell of yourself, you dumbass. Like, what the fuck are you thinking? And then to come back in a, into a fight like this and in my last fight where, you know, I'm completely ready. When I was ready last time, I just made a, a grave mistake that I know you should never make as, a, as an MMA athlete. And that's counting your chickens before they hatch. And I really thought I won that fight. And I know everybody was like, what's wrong with this fucking dancing? Uh, well, I soon realized after I watched, like, damn, what an idiot. So we won't make that mistake again. And, uh, yeah, we just move on from it, man. You get a second second opportunity to, you know, to rewrite what, what should have already happened. But we got to make that happen. I love it, man. And I, I meant what I said when I was excited to finally talk to yeah. you for the first time. And I think – Two minutes into the interview, I know exactly why. You are not only down to earth, but you're very real about things. I think a lot of people would shy away from being honest, not only in interviews, but honest with themselves. Where do you find that within you? Is, is it just how you approach life? Is it how you approach this career? Uh, because this is obviously a very dangerous game. It's it's honestly, it's refreshing to talk to a fighter who understands the negatives and the positives of not only the sport, but but their own decisions and actions. Yeah, um, you know, I've been through my ups and downs, man. You know, I've, I've went through my drug addiction, which is really bad at the time, you know, for my family. And, you know, we came out the other side of it, you know. Um, there's just a lot of changes. That it, I remember one time I'm doing an interview, and that's why I don't fuck with DC bitch ass or Dominic Cruz bitch ass. Fuck both of y'all. Um, I was in an interview, you know, after. You know, I was going through a lot, and short story shorter, I kind of explained that it was different when I fought uh, Lima, and DC was such a fucking dick, he was such a fucking dickhead, little fat butterball looking ass nigga, uh, he was such a fucking dickhead, and Dominic Cruz, he's a little smug asshole too, you know Dominic, I mean, they're, they're, they're great athletes, but the human I met at those times, they can go fuck themselves, um, but they was just mean about it, bro. I cried. I was crying thinking about, you know, but I, and these motherfuckers was just cold hearted, you know, and um, whatever, man. That shit just really pissed me off. So that's why I don't fuck with those two dickheads. But um, I don't know where I was getting at with that. That shit just pissed me off. <laughs> well, I definitely don't want to fall into that category when uh when it comes to doing interviews with you. No, you want no, you want it all. <laughs> it was in the um, moment when I was trying to be real with them. And they kind of just sloughed it off. Like, oh, right. what well, chain? Well, fuck you, DC. If you don't mind, I'll get real with you because, uh, yeah. you know, there's there's something you mentioned, you know, your past and your struggles. It's something that 
I think too often, especially in the other big American sports, we just think, oh, Tom Brady comes out on Sundays. He throws a football. We yell at him if he misses a pass. We think yep. we can be better, and then we go on. I think for me, as someone who grew up in, in covering those sports, once I found MMA and combat sports, I was so drawn to having a platform where fighters could tell their story of who they are and what makes them the fighter they are. When you look back at all the things you've had to endure in your personal life, I can only imagine that fighting in a cage doesn't even come close to some of the struggles and, and, and the mountains you've had to climb uh, to get to where you are today. Yeah, a lot of it was self-inflicted, right? So I can go back and really be like, Maurice, you could have done it different, but motherfucker, you want to be, be hard-headed. But I think if I wouldn't have learned those lessons, even if I was 3-0 in the UFC, depressed and fucking going on cocaine benders for <laughs> On and off. Like, it was bad, bro. It was really bad. I was undefeated in the UFC, but I hated my fucking job. I didn't like it. You know, I really didn't like it. Um, and a lot of the fighters go through this, you know. You make it to the UFC, a lot of the time it's the pinnacle of what you do. Um, I was on Ultimate Fighter, then made it to the UFC, so I was on a high. Then I was 3-0. and But then the reality set in that it doesn't matter how hard you work, you know, um, shit can get real you can go on a loop streak and get cut and then what's next like what have you gained from the sport like what good memories do i have and i had none at the time because i was chasing the bag right so when i moved here and all this pfl stuff happened i've changed my idea of what's important to me you know and like i'm not gonna sit here and be like oh my family is everything all the time and i love hey man i'm a fucking human too i get it in when i want to get it in me and my family, we do family stuff. I'm a dad. I got kids. Like, I'm a normal I'm a fucking person. I just happen to do extraordinary things. I'm, I'm able to do that. And at the highest level, you know, I really, you can say what you want about me. I'm able to do it at the highest level. I've been, I've been here for damn near 14 years. Niggas ain't even doing that. You know, you don't see a lot of guys around. I've seen guys here and gone and uh, I've, I've seen a lot of shit, you know, um, but the best thing was being able to train with John Jones, really. I, he kind of saved my career. He saved my love for the game. Uh, and and not just him, you know, all the people that he put in the road with us, right? So John created this environment, right? Created this environment. Obviously, you see what type of environment he creates yeah. from the, you know, from the work that he did. Um. But he just creates this environment and uh, you have no choice to get better. Like if you don't get better, you're an idiot. You're stupid. Like you should, you have a, you have no choice to get better. You get the best coaches in the world. Um, it, it's a small group of all heavyweights, maybe some light heavyweights. And everybody's working, man. So I created a lot of my confidence and where I'm at. And, you know, my listening coach is, you know, uh, it was with John's lifting coach, Jordan Chavez. And that lifting, I'm not going to sit here in front with you. That lifting has given me so much fucking confidence knowing that at the end of the day, I used to always worry, right? I used to always worry that, um, you know, are they stronger than me? You know, because I didn't lift at all. You know, it's not a worry of mine now. He's probably not stronger than me. I just don't see it. He only got no back muscles. I'll, I'll say it. just like Marcelo Nunes, Mo, one of my teammates, Romo, he's a powerlifter. After we squared up, he goes, Mo, homie's not even strong. I said, how do you know, Romo? He goes, he don't got any back muscles. <laughs> I love that. Well, then I'm definitely not strong because I, I have no back muscles. But uh, I, I do want to ask you, obviously, you had a great moment with uh, John earlier this year when uh, you were doing an interview with MMA Mania and John had some things <laughs> to say about Francis. But uh, John... You know, I, I want to do ask you about the uh, the Stipe fight just as a teammate of his, but I want to ask you yeah. something more that I feel I connect with because, you know, I've never gone down um, the road of addiction, but I have my own issues yeah. and I've lost people to it. And I think there's something special about this sport and and people like yourself. And when you when you credit John for what he's done for you, everyone knows John's highly publicized life and career. What does it mean to go through hell and back with a man like that by your side, ready to train with you, ready to to go through through life with you? Um, you know, it's not even just John. Let me just 
it, it's the whole team, man. Like, right. like it's, the, it's really the whole team. It's really the group of guys that he put together. Like, I swim and lift with two of my other teammates, right? And three times a week, you know, three times a week. Um, and then just, just like me and John, have, you know, I've known John for a couple of years, and I've been gracious enough to have a friendship with him that, you know, that extends, extends beyond, like, what MMA is. And, you know, I got, I've gotten to know him, and uh, he's kind of helped me through some – where we talk some situations out. And so from man to man, that's my homeboy, fam. That's, that's you know, that's my fucking homeboy. And uh, I wish him nothing the best as he wishes me nothing but the best. And he supports me as my teammate. And John's less of a coach, more of a teammate supporting one of his good friends, you know. Like, he supports me and shows up for me as his teammate. That's what's up. You know what I mean? Yeah. But he also coaches me. You know, he gives me coaching tips and helps me out. So uh, I'm just happy to be in a position, man. Now it's time to make all that. All that shit is good, fine, well, and good, and that's cute. But at the end of the day, we got to go get dubs, you know? You can't uh, you can't ride around with the GOAT losing, fam. It's just not a thing. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, no, I I, I, hey, I, I you, hey, hey, you laughing, but that that's really what it is. You know what I mean? No, I get that, it. That's really what it is. Like, I, I put in the work. Like, I can't be out here fucking making miscalculations like that. You know? And at the end of the day, you can't blame it on, you know, a lot of guys are going blame their corner. Well, why would they say that? And, well, at the end of the day, nigga, you need to know where you are. It's called MMA IQ. You, you, you should know where you are in a fight, right? Your corner reaffirms and kind of helps you. And, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, in the back of your head, you never stay on your back. You're losing the fight on your back, right? And we also know that these judges out here are suspects. That's, I mean, that's putting it easy. The, the light Not the judges, light. hey, not the judges in New York, though. They're the best judges ever. I, I do agree with that. I agree wholeheartedly. The judges in New York, hey, the judges in New York City, yep. number one. Yeah. 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 But the other ones, maybe, you know, but New York City, number one. Make sure you hear this, okay? I'm I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna make sure to make that a point. I, I do <laughs> love it. Um what what should we expect from you? Maurice, in the, in this fight, I you know we've already talked about what your opponent brings, and he's going to be labeled the knockout, you know, the knockout guy. But that's not something you know that's new to you. I, I you know, I understood more than you know what you were just saying when you say you know when you ride around the go the goat, you know you you got to get the dubs, and that's not just because oh John Jones is a, is your teammate and your supporter, but it's because you're right there, Maurice Green. You're right there, and we've already talked about your journey. You know, this is just another another leg towards something I feel, like I said, when we first started talking, is something that will be one of the best stories, uh, not just in 2023, but in all of MMA, uh, if you get to where you believe you can be, which is not only to the finals, but with a, a championship. So what yeah. should we expect for you uh, on August 18th? Yeah, I'll be honest with you. You're just going to fact, uh, you're going to get no quit in me. That's it. I can I can guarantee you no quit. That's it. And I didn't quit last time, but I also didn't work when I should have been working. So I mean, you can classify that as like you decided not to work. You just got no quit attitude, and and um, I'm gonna push the pace on his ass, and we're gonna see if Big Homie can keep up. You know, that's really it. I'm gonna I'm gonna push the pace on him. Like my greatest strength is the fact that I can outlast these. I really can when they get real tired. But now I need to outlast and win those positions, right? I need to win those positions all the time. I understand what's at stake for here, for, for me. I honestly feel like this is like one of those, this is going to be a career definer. This this whole tournament's a career definer for me. You know, I'm 37 years old. I don't want to be doing this forever. You know, I really don't. Like I, I love it. You know, I teach kickboxing. I, I teach kids and adults kickboxing. I love that. But this shit fucking hurts, you know? My body hurts. And, and it, it's a lot of time spent. And it has been for the last 14 years. Oh, you know, I'm leaving here with something. Like Denzel said, I'm from around the way. I'm leaving with something. And, uh, you know, the world don't believe it. You you know, the world don't believe it, but I believe it. And that's enough for me. That, yeah, that's you know? all that matters at the end of the day. Um, yeah, I'll put it like this. They told me when I walked into my first gym, I told them I was going to be in the UFC. They didn't believe me. 
I was 330 pounds and never fought a day in my life. I was 25 years old. I didn't think this was going to be a career for me. I was just taking a fight just to take it. I had about 45 days, you know, it was back in 2010. Went out there and TKO'd that guy, took another fight and then another one and then another one. And over this, this journey has showed me over time what I was made of, you know? So we're going to see, we're going to see at Madison Square Garden what I'm made of. I already know what I'm made of. You know, I just need the world to catch up with that. So I got to put on a performance so the world will catch up with that. So. I can't wait. And you've got me ready to run through a wall right now, man. I, I knew, I knew <laughs> it would be great talking to you and, uh, and it absolutely has been. I'm so excited for this fight. I'm really thankful for the opportunity you gave me to, you know, talk to you today. Hopefully we'll talk again, uh, you know, after this fight. Uh, you know, I'm I'm also a uh, Illinois resident, you know, and I know a lot of guys down there. And I uh, spent about eight years out there. My dad yeah. still lived there. I started my career in Illinois. So, yeah, <laughs> well, the MMA, as you know, is, is dead here. So unfortunately, but uh I mean, I, I, I've I've gone on quite a few rants about it. There's no promotions left. There's hardly you know, where's the XFO gone. Where's Fight Card Entertainment? Just closed up shop. Ah, oh. from what I was told. Yep. Wow, that's crazy. I didn't even know that. Yep. Yep. So, <laughs> with that said, man, you got people back home very proud of everything that you're doing, win or loss. I, I I know what it means to you to get wins, and I know what it would mean to you to not only get this win, but to get to the finals and get that belt wrapped around your waist. No, no, I, I, I got to buy a house. I got to yeah. buy a house this year. That's my fucking motivation. You know, the me goal is to be a world champion. That's a me goal. That's what I need for me, right? It's validation for my career and the time I spent in the game personally. Um, I don't see it any other way. I'm going to be a world champion. Uh, for my family, that check is going to make sure my kids – have everything they need, uh, not need, yeah, all their needs and maybe some of their wants. They have all their needs and necessities to be successful as adults. So that's kind of where I'm at with it, real talk. Well, August 18th, Maurice Green, Hennon Ferreira, main event, Madison Square Garden. Maurice Green, before I let you go, uh, do you want to plug anything? Hey, um, the crochet boss, holla at me. I got to plug. <laughs> give me some, hey, gotta give me some money to plug that. I ain't got nothing to plug. I got you. I got you. Well, man, I, I'll plug the hell out of this interview and I'll plug every time uh, we could talk and every time you fight. Thank you it's, so uh, much. I really appreciate it. And like I said, I'm not blowing smoke. I, I, have, I have a high amount of respect for you and, and fighters who don't come from a white picket fence. They, uh, they're, they're way more enjoyable to talk to. So I appreciate the I real, the uh, <laughs> authenticity you brought. So thank you very much. Thank you. You have a wonderful day, brother.